G'day superstars, today we're talking about DaVinci Resolve and the 36 shortcuts you need to know to make your editing life much, much simpler. Not only am I gonna show you exactly what these shortcuts are, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use them and where you would use them, so you can start using them and improving your editing process immediately. And let's start that right now. All right, with DaVinci is open, this is a video I edited previously, so I'm just gonna show you what different shortcuts do in different parts of this edit. Um, so you can just follow along and do it in your own edits. So basic one is to you want to take a file, say for this one here, and you want to cut it, you do Control X, and you can cut it, and you can then, and then you can do Paste, which is Control V, and that will put it where you can, where you cut and paste it from. Same with your, your copy and paste, it's just Control C, and then you can move your play bar to where you want, and then Control V again, and they've copied that particular file. And of course, if you want to undo, it is Control Z. And that will undo everything. And if you want to redo, it is Control Shift and Z. Like so. And it puts it back. Now we're on a PC, so obviously Control is the standard. So if you're on a Mac, that would change that to Command. Now if you want to select all of these files, you just do Control A. And that will select everything. And Deselect will be Control Shift A. Now we've done that, let's get into some editing side of things. So let's first press T. Up here you see you've got an arrow. If you go to edit a file now and you want to trim this area, it'll trim it section. You can trim each section like this. But if you want to trim the whole timeline, you would press T. Now when you do that, it actually sinks your timeline down and trims it down to where you want it to trim it down to. The next one is the blade function, which is this function up here. You can click it yourself, but if you just hit B, you can then trim it where you want. You can cut that file right there, and then you can cut it again if you want to. Go back to your arrow, and then you've got a control over those particular files as individual files rather than one big file. If you want to switch between the blade and the cursor here, the arrow, you just press A. There's your next shortcut is A, and that switches between them, so you can go B for the blade, A for the cursor, T for trim, for instance. Now if you want to delete a file, you can just select the file you want to delete, for instance this one here, and hit the backspace button, and that will delete that automatically. Now we did select all before, which selected everything, but if you wanted to select everything in front of the play bar here, so anything in front of this bar, you press Y, and that selects all the video and audio on that track. This is a great one if you want to turn snapping off, and what snapping is, if you have a look at this, as you drag it along, it snaps to the bar. You see how it sort of snaps to that line? And you can see it snaps to the edge of that as you move it does it automatically snaps to the edge of that frame and that's a really handy thing to have in editing but sometimes you need to turn it off and be a little bit more precise so to turn that off you just hit the end key and now it won't snap it'll just be scrolled like so you see and if you hit the end key again it'll turn it back on so now it's now snapping in place like it was before if you want to extend your timeline, as you can see your timeline's all compressed, you can just do Control Plus and that will actually spread your timeline out like so. The more you press it, the more it spreads it out. And minus to bring it back in. So Control, minus, control Plus to spread it out and then Control Minus to bring it back in. Say you want to add a transition to this particular clip, you do Control T and that will add a transition. In this case, it's adding a fade in, fade out. Now let's go to the top window here. You've got this video clip, for instance. We're gonna be up this top, so you click there and select. Now you can edit and mark in and out. And usually you can use these two arrows to mark the start of the clip and say the end of the clip. And then you can drag that down into your timeline. And it'll just be that particular clip. But if you wanna do it quicker, hit the I key, that'll mark in, and the O key, which will mark it out. So you need to keep using the mouse. You can literally just drag where you want, go I, drag where you want, O, drag where you want, I, drag where you want, O, and you haven't have to worry about dragging, clicking, dragging, clicking. Now if you want to start adding markers to certain parts of your clip, say you, want to, say you don't want to cut it just yet, you want to go through it and find bits that are interesting, you can literally hit M and create a marker. Now on those markers, you can double click on them and you can call it um, you know, a man sits in chair. And you can write any notes you want. 
any keyword you want that will make you remember that particular point. And you can go done. And now when you scroll to that point, you click on it, you've got man sits in chair. You can see all the things you can, that uh, you need to do. You might, you might say to yourself, you know what, I might want to add some text about here somewhere. So you create a markup with the M key, double click it, put text, I learn how to type, put text here. And you go done. So then when you go back to that point later on, you edit your whole file, go back to that point and you can put your text there. It reminds you to do it. Markers are very handy. And sometimes you don't want to have in and out points in there as well, confusing the matter. So you can hit X, that will enter that play line. And then you can scroll along and press M for your markers and so on. So you've got this clean timeline you can work with. And then when you're ready to cut it, you just go back to the start, hit that button and you can cut. So you, and on that very point, you can hit, like we said before, you can do I and you can do O on that very point and you can cut that particular point if you want to keep it for your video. You can also do markers in your timeline as well. So if you click on your timeline down here and scroll to where you want to scroll to say here, you can press M and create your own marker there as well. And you can write, this needs text. These are really great too if you're working with somebody else, like you're collaborating on a job, you literally can put markers in and tell them what to do. Little notes that let them know that they need to do certain things. You want to select a certain section, say this file here, press X, and that will give you just that file. So if you were to render that out, it would only render that file out. And you can do Ctrl Z to undo if you want to. Now we're going to look at some playback stuff. Playback and navigation, all right? So if you're gonna play back your file, even if you're in the bottom window or in the top window, if you press L, it'll play your video. If you press L again, it'll be faster. And again, faster and faster and faster and faster. Now to stop that from playing, we can go J for reverse. And J will reverse it, and the more you press it, the faster it gets, as we said. And to stop it playing, you just press K, and that will stop. But now I've cleaned up the timeline a little bit just to make it a bit simpler to see. So let's just say you're playing a video and you're about here, press the L key like we said, and it's playing, but you want to go back to the first frame, you hit this semicolon key, that will take you back to the first frame. If it's playing and you want to go to the end of your video, you just hit the apostrophe key, which is right next to the enter key, and it will take you to the end frame. Let's say we've put some uh, keyframes in here, so let's go to inspector. We've got some zoom keyframes, so we're going to put a keyframe in here, and then we're going to go to here. And we're going to zoom it, say to there. That's created another keyframe. Then we go here, and that's created. We're going to zoom it back down again. That's created another keyframe. So when you press play, it's doing this kind of zoom. Now, if you want to jump between those keyframes, so as it's playing, you want to go back to the previous keyframe. You hit the left bracket, which is next to the just above the enter key. That'll take you back to the left. And if you want to go to the next keyframe, you hit the right bracket. Then I'll move you to the next keyframe, press it again to the next keyframe, and so on. So you can move along between your keyframes using those two bracket keys. So I've just used the blade and I've split these two clips to show you what happens. If you press the down arrow key, you can move from one clip to the next. So if you keep pressing it, it'll just move, the down arrow key will just move you along the timeline each clip. It's really handy. Also, if you do the up arrow key, it'll go backwards. Now we're going to do some file handling shortcuts. The first one is to save your project, which is Control S. That'll save it automatically. If you want to do Save As, you do Control Shift S, and you can put in your file name if you like. If you want to create a new timeline, you can do Control N, and that will give you a new timeline. You can name and you can sort call it Timeline Two and go Create. And now we have over here in the left Timeline One and Timeline Two. If you want to import a project, you can do Control plus I, and you can select what project you want to put in there. And when you want to export a project, you just do Control E. And that means you can save that wherever you like, and you can save that project file, that's DaVinci project file, wherever you want. Say you're doing a big edit and uh, you finished it, and you want to save that project file, but you want to go back to it later. Um, but you need, and you need to work on another computer, you can save that project file, go to somebody else's house with all your files and that project file and load it up into DaVinci Resolve, Resolve somewhere else. It's very handy. Or if your DaVinci Resolve 
files or your computer files and you've got that stuff backed up somewhere else, you've got that bonus of still having that project file for as long as you need it. Now that you have a whole bunch of shortcuts at your disposal, you can click on this video here and it'll teach you how to color grade as well for a beginner. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.